What a week it's been, and we're not done yet. Welcome into another emergency podcast, Thursday, December 8th. Frank Stample joined by Scott White, and this time we have another one of those premier shortstops. Xander Bogart signing an 11-year, $280 million deal with the San Diego Padres. He's leaving the Boston Red Sox and headed out west. We know the Padres have been looking to spend some big money. There were rumors that they offered Aaron Judge a monster deal, deal as well, and instead they wind up with Xander Bogarts. Scott, to be honest, I don't know why teams are just handing out 11-year contracts <laughs> to 29- and 30-year-old shortstops, but I'm not a general uh, manager, so I don't have to make that decision. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about Xander Bogarts. Coming off a, a bit of a disappointing season, great batting average still, 307. But 15 home runs, that's definitely down from what we've seen from Xander Bogarts in the past. He still ran a little bit, eight steals. I got to say, Scott, and Padres fans are not going to like me for this. I don't really like this move for Xander Bogarts. No, you look at I don't either. His career in Fenway Park, 872 OPS. Career on the road, 758. I know the Padres are a really good lineup, but this is a big, big downgrade in terms of park factors. What are you thinking? Well, first of all, I want to mention that probably what these GMs are thinking, handing 11-year contracts to 30-year-old shortstops is, I'm not going to be the one who has to figure it out later. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Certainly in the case of Dombrowski, he's pretty old. Um, but uh, <laughs> Jeez. but um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, Bogarts going to San Diego. Yeah, no, it, it seemed like, and I hadn't looked that closely at this before, but it seemed like he was perfectly suited for Fenway Park, particularly as we're coming out of this juice ball era. Uh, Xander Bogarts has always been a guy who produced middling eggs of velocities, but got the, the most out of it by pulling the ball over the green monster with frequency. Look at his spray chart from this past year. I mean, they're, Pretty much all hit that direction. 10 of his 15 home runs came at home. And, uh, you know, San Diego is not such a great place to hit. It certainly doesn't have that short porch and left field, that really close left field fence because of the green monster. So, um, yeah, I think it, I think it kind of locks Xander Bogarts into being more of the 15 homer type we saw last year than the 25 homer type we've seen in years past. I don't think he's going to get a lot worse than last year. I feel like that's kind of the low mark for him. But now it's, it's more likely that this is who he is going forward. Still going to be in a great lineup, a star studded lineup, obviously going to reliably hit 300 in the middle of that lineup. So yeah, he's still got to be a great starting option at shortstop. I think clearly stands out more in points leagues than, than in, in Roto now. Uh, but in Roto, I would say Bogarts is, let's see, where do I have him? Eighth. I don't know that I so motivated to downgrade him. But some of the guys I have behind him, Tim Anderson, certainly O'Neal Cruz, they have a lot more upside, I would say. Yeah, I, I could definitely see it with O'Neal Cruz, specifically in a Roto or Categories League. Obviously, the plate discipline is pretty rough there. You know, I probably came off as too negative on Xander Bogarts. He's still an amazing hitter. And this, the top half of this Padres lineup is loaded. I mean, this is something you see in an on an all-star team. I mean, we're talking about, I think Fernando Tatis is probably going to lead off when he's healthy. Then they have Juan Soto batting second. They're going to have Manny Machado, Xander Bogart sitting right in the middle of that. So the counting stats could be massive here for Xander Bogarts. So I don't want to discount that. And again, batting average is going to be awesome, but I just don't really know where the power is going to be, Scott. I think he's probably more of a 15 to 18 home run hitter at this point. Maybe he can pop 20. Uh, he's going to run a little bit, but again, the park factor is a big negative shift for him using the uh, stat cast park factors for right-handed batters in particular. Boston was third the past three years, San Diego 27th. If we look at just for home run park factors, Boston was 12th, San Diego was 19th. So no matter what way you want to look at it, this is a downgrade in terms of the park. Obviously the lineup is 
uh, amazing here. The early ADP for Xander Bogarts is 87, according to the NFBC, which actually seems like a pretty fair value for Xander Bogarts. Maybe it jumps up a little bit now, but that is the eighth round of a 12-team league, the sixth round of a 15-team league. Scott, what do you think about that price tag? Uh, 87 early on here for Xander Bogarts. Uh, let's see. That makes him the 11th shortstop off the board. Of course, NFBC selling out harder for upside than I would. So they have O'Neill Cruz ahead of him by quite a bit. They also have Tommy Edmond, Tim Anderson. Who I mentioned ahead of him. To be honest, Scott, if you look at the position, it's just really bunched up too. There's so yeah. much talent. There's one, two, three, four, five, six shortstops going within 20 picks of each other that are all like really talented guys. Yeah. And that's probably how most drafts will play out. You'll get, you'll get a little shortstop run there after the shallower positions are, uh, you know, after, after, after their really high end types are off the board. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's, I, I guess that's basically fair. 85th overall. Let me see if I can pull up my top. 300 real quick to see how it compares to where I have him. Uh, I'd be fine with him as my starter still. I, I'm not expecting to be the guy who pays up for uh, for like Francisco Lindor or Bo Bichette. I, like I, I just think there are going to be more pressing needs at that point. So I have a Xander Bogart 69th. Currently, I may move him down a little with this news. Um yeah, I mean it's it's kind of at the start of that run as opposed to toward the end of that run where the ADP shows him. But I, I think it's more or less fair. All right, let's talk about some of the ripple effects here, Scotty. Specifically with the Padres, looks like Hassan Kim will slide over to second base. Jake Cronenworth can play first base for this team, and I think ultimately it helps the counting stats all around for uh, some of those names in the top half of the lineup. You know, maybe even for a Jake Cronenworth or, or Hassan Kim who will. Uh, bat there in the back half of that lineup for the Red Sox side of things. Trevor story could easily slide back over to shortstop. If they want to do that, you know, maybe they still look to bring in a Dansby Swanson and leave Trevor story at second base. There's a few different ways the Red Sox can go, but just the way that things are constituted right now, Trevor story would likely play shortstop. And then you know, I guess they can use Kike Hernandez or Christian Arroyo. The hope is that and they Manuel keep- Valdez, baby. Not That's what I was about to say. Next, <laughs> is that hopefully the Red Sox give their prospect and Manuel Valdez a shot here to play second base, but not not an especially high end prospect, but an interesting one for fantasy yeah. as a as a bat first guy. Um, yeah, I, I think the plan when they signed Story last off season was okay. In case we can't bring back Bogarts, this is our shortstop for the next several years. So that's what I expect to happen there. I think the ripple effect is more interesting for San Diego because it's like. Okay, so Fernando Tatis is just done being a shortstop, huh? Like, that's just, he's out. Yeah, he's, I, yeah. outfielder. Right. I, you, you got both of them locked up into the 2030s. Now, Xander Bogarts isn't going to be able to play shortstop until he's 41, obviously. So, uh, you know, already he's, you know, it's funny. He'll, he'll, he'll probably be the opening day shortstop for the Padres, but he might be the best the, like the fourth best shortstop in their starting lineup between uh, Haseon Kim, um, uh, also, uh, who am I thinking of? Haseon Kim, Fernando Tatis, and Manny Machado. I would say Manny Machado is probably a better shortstop defensively than Xander Bogarts, even though he hasn't played there in a while. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I wonder, I wonder how much they'll move guys around. Like, Kim, does it really make sense for Kim as like the main thing Hassan Kim brings to the table is defense, and you're you're keeping him from playing shortstop? I don't know. That seems a little weird to me. And and maybe he won't be an everyday player anyway. Yeah. Uh, first base, obviously, a, a pos- easy position to fill with offense. Do you really want to confine Cronenworth there? I don't know. But the big takeaway is. This might be the last year of shortstop eligibility for Fernando Tatis. So enjoy that while it lasts. I just don't know where else they can go, Scott. I mean, this team has so much money paid up in their top four hitters in their lineup. I don't know that they're going to use more resources for 
even like a DH type or a lumbering first baseman, whatever it might be. So I think for now, it just kind of makes sense to slide Cronenworth over. And I guess Hassan came to second base. I also drafted one team where I have Hassan Kim. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just kind of hoping he remains in the starting lineup and I'm, I'm crossing my fingers there, but yeah. he's really good defensively. And uh, I think they'll kind of, they'll, they'll move him around and he'll continue to play. Um, but yeah, th- those are, you know, that's everything going on here with this again, Xander Bogarts, once again, 11 year, $280 million deal, massive contract with the San Diego Padres. And uh, we'll see what happens next. If the Boston Red Sox, try and pivot, bring in a Dansby Swanson, or they'll just rock with Trevor Story at shortstop for now. For Scott, I am Frank. Thank you all for listening and watching this emergency edition of Fantasy Baseball Today. We'll be back again on Tuesday, hopefully. Bye-bye.